In this video, I'm going to show how we can take a drum, any drum, and turn it into a MIDI trigger in Ableton Live. So basically, we take an analog sound, an analog instrument, and then trigger any sample we want using MIDI in Ableton Live. To start, I have this rototom, and I'm just going to play a little. Now, now you'll notice this is very sensitive. It's getting a lot of those bounce backs and working great at loud and quiet volume. So I scoured the internet to figure out how to do this and there's very little information. A lot of the Max for Live plugins don't work specifically for my needs. And scouring online, I found the best thing I could and I'm really excited to share that with you. So this, so on the Rototom, I basically have a mesh head, which makes it a lot easier to deal with because it doesn't have a lot of bounce back. It doesn't kind of resonate and vibrate after you hit it. It's very dead sounding. And that works great for this triggering. Though I have used different heads on this and it was fine. I just found it works a lot cleaner and better when you have a mesh head. And then on this mesh head, I have this right here, which is a little Pizio. And that's kind of like a mic. And that's being sent via quarter inch over into my sound card. And in my sound card, it's being sent to Ableton Live. And here I have a lot, which I'm gonna explain through this video, but basically I use this VST called T KT Drum Trigger. It's free for Mac and PC. And when I hit it, you'll see that the inputting audio is seen by the VST. I go through all these different effects of like, basically saying, all right, when it hits, what happens, what MIDI note does it send, things like that. And then that is being sent over to a drum rack. Great thing about this is now I can also change it on the fly. It's a very easy way of making your own sounds. It can be great in live performance, which is why I put this all together. All right, so now let's build this from scratch so I can show you how to make it in Ableton. So now I have this blank set. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the audio in from my Rototom and audio two is the middle drum. Great, I'm gonna set that to auto. So you can hear it. Sounds terrible, those little Pizios are not great for recording, but it's perfect for what I'm doing. So now that I have this as an input, what I wanna do is in my plugins, grab the KT drum trigger. And again, there'll be a link to the download on my article. So check that out. And what I'm gonna do is I have all these different parameters here. You can already see the incoming signal. There's lots of low end dirt there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to a high pass. And I can change that filter a little, just cut out that rumble. Now, one of the biggest things you're gonna want to play with is right here, this trigger threshold. And you'll see as I hit this, there's this line that I'm lowering that those little points, those little points that happen, that's when it actually sees it as a trigger. So if it's, be, if it's below that, then we'll see the trigger. If it's above, that line's above it, then it won't even see it. It won't recognize it as a hit. So I'm going down here, and now it'll recognize it. It's a really good start, but we need to send this over into a MIDI so we can make that sound. So I'm just gonna delete this audio. And right now I'm gonna send this MIDI. There's a little roundabout way of doing it, but it will make sense. So I'm gonna rename this to Mid Tom. I'm gonna rename this to mid, and then this to drum rack, because things sound better when you name them. It's definitely easier to know what's going on. All right, so in this mid, I want the ins from the mid tom. It already sees the KT drum trigger. Great, I'm gonna put it as input, and my output, I'm gonna send over to the drum rack. So now when I hit it, see that little yellow? That is representing the hit. Great. Now all we have to do is put a sound in there. So I'm gonna go into drums. Let's see, let's just go with like an 808. 
I drop that in. Now you'll see right down in here that I get a little yellow. It, it's too far below these notes, so we're not hearing anything. Well, what you want to do is change the MIDI note. So if I go up, cool, I just landed on the tom sound. Now, one thing you might want to do is turn down either the audio gain of this particular sound, or you can do this audio output mode, and I'm just going to put it to mute. So basically, now we're only hearing the triggered sample. Now, you're going to have to play with this a little bit to get it just right, where you're going to play with the threshold amounts. There's a few other things in here, like attack and release, to get it just the way that your specific drum and needs want to. But it's not that hard. Playing with it for an hour or two, you'll, you'll pretty much get it. Now, the reason I did this weird routing of this one into that one into that one is because, basically, if I duplicate this, this whole thing, now we have twice as much. I'm just going to put this as uh, big and big and color it just for my own <laughs> sanity so I know what's going on. Now, if I set this to 3, which is what my big tom is set at, now it'll be seen. Now, the only thing I have to do left is change the, uh, where is it? Drum note. Now you might have noticed if I hit this a lot, I'm only hearing that first note. That's because it never falls below the threshold again which is a key thing, so I'm going to have to raise that threshold up for this bass. And you're going to have to find what is just right for your particular need. Great. And there you have it. That's how you can start playing with this. Now, think about it. You could have multiple different Piezos sending in to a sound card, and you can control an entire kit. This is like a really cheap, awesome DIY way of doing things. For the cost of one drum trigger, I have a whole system set up, running it into Ableton, and I can use this in my live sets, recordings, you name it. Super fun, awesome way. You can also take these Piezo, put them on a desk, put them on anything, on a book, on an art installation, and play with it there, and do the same triggering effect on any surface, anything that will resonate and be picked up by that Piezo. So there you go. I'm so glad to figure out how to do this and share this so people can just know right off the bat what to do as compared to scouring for days and days like I did and hope you guys enjoy. If you use this technique, let me know. I'd love to either see video of you playing and how it sounds in Ableton or just like a heads up of like, hey, this last album, I used this in the recording studio. Just really interested in this subject. And thanks a lot for checking it out. Check out subaqueousmusic.com. There's a lot more. I have 200 plus articles on there. Tons of Ableton Live packs to download. You name it. Check it out. And thanks a lot.